June the 6th, 2023. All right, first item on the agenda would be the review of Sherwood Apartments at 4921 Haddon Avenue. Ms. Graham. I, um, <clears throat> I'm hopeful they'll be here. Um, we sent several reminders, so we'll see where they are. We want to know about the security um, and the camera system. We wanted them to have security on property and a camera system that's hooked in a star watch. So I'm not sure if uh, I don't see uh, Williams or Lowe. So, um, but, but that's what we'll find out tonight. So it should be a quick review. We just want to know where they are for the safety of the community out there. Okay. Thank you. Uh, do number two, then I think we have a special presentation that Mr. Smith want to give to have someone on the, on the Zoom for. So the application for a lounge retail liquor license of class one, I think Mr. Pruitt carried that over, so we'll address that when he get here today at five. Uh, Mr. Smith, we'll yield for you at this time. Uh, yes, sir, uh, Mr. Uh, Pro Tem, uh, Robert Smith, City Planning Director here at the city. Um, at your last meeting, you asked for a bit of an update on um, the Bird Scooter uh, Company, where they are in ridership, um, and everything associated with the company as a whole. Um, as you all know or may not know, um, we did an initial launch uh, back in March um, of 2023. Um, Bird actually put out about 80 scooters um, throughout downtown and over the course of the last uh, three months, uh, roughly after those first couple of weeks, uh, they've deployed an additional uh, 80 scooters. Uh, so they're, they're up to about 180 scooters uh, altogether uh, placed uh, throughout downtown. And uh, ridership is exponentially very, very well. It has been very well received uh, so far. And um, with, without going too further, much further into the details, I want to turn it over to uh, Mr. Bruno Lopez, who was actually here um, before you um, to get the license approved and the permit approved for them to operate scooters and park scooters in the city of Montgomery and also in the city uh, right away. And Bruno is um, actually not going to be able to be seen because he is actually en route to the airport. Uh, down in Florida, but he's going to speak to um, any and everything associated with uh, bird scooters as they are right now, where they are. Bruno, can you hear me? I hear you fine. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. Thanks, Robert. Um, good afternoon, Council, Mr. Mayor. Sorry I can't see you guys, and sorry you can't see me today. Um, unfortunately, as Robert mentioned, I'm on my way to the airport, but um, you know, for us at Bird, uh, Montgomery is of the utmost importance. So we wanted to make sure that um, I was able to join you today. I didn't want to put it on somebody else. I just wanted to make sure to be there uh, with you all today, even if it had to be virtually. So appreciate it. Um, feel free to uh, jump in and ask any questions you have. But um, uh, Robert had asked me to give a little update on, on where we are and how the program is going. So um, unless there's any questions, I'll, I'll kind of dive right in. But like I said, feel free to just jump in and, and ask me anything. Um, so good. far, the uh, great. Uh, so so far, we have seen uh, specifically in Montgomery, we've seen over fifteen thousand rides. We're at about fifteen thousand five hundred, um, and I will say, for uh, early stages of a program uh, with this amount of scooters, is, is really encouraging. Um, that is uh, above of what, what we expected. So you know, from our end, it seems like the program is being well received, and and uh, definitely uh, we're seeing high demand. So that's very encouraging. Um, there's been about uh, 22,000 miles traveled um, on those 15,000 rides, uh, which equates to about uh, just over 7,000 pounds of CO2 uh, that was captured and, and not emitted into the atmosphere. So all, you know, all those things are very encouraging numbers, and um, we're happy to see that and hear that. Um, as, as you know, there's been some issues, as there always is in new launches. Uh, it's something we've always tried to communicate with our city partners. Um, that there's, we don't know what hiccups are going to come. The one thing is we're always committed to addressing them, working with the city to implementing the different tools we have available to make sure we're, we're tailoring the, 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 the program to exactly what uh, Montgomery needs. So um, through some conversations with both 
council members, uh, the city itself, and, and uh, with PD, uh, we went ahead and implemented some new changes that weren't part of the original program. Um, some of those include, uh, we currently have a, a curfew, um, meaning that the, the scooters themselves shut off at a certain time. Uh, and we think that that's going to help uh, with, with some of the issues that we've seen with some like the joy riding and the late night riding um, around town. Uh, we've also implemented a, a few new slow zones, especially in, in your downtown district where, you know, some of the more density and, and some of the more foot traffic is. So the scooters now, whenever they enter those blocks, um, is, uh, they slow down automatically um, at all times of the day. Uh, you know, that, that does twofold. One, it's a little safer for, for pedestrians, but also two, it sends the, the rider a signal. There's a reason we're slowing you down. We send them a message through the app. The scooter gives them a beep, uh, him or her a beep, and uh, you know that sends a message to the rider saying, oh, there's a reason why you're being slowed down. Be cautious in this area. So we think that'll be effective in, in, in also uh, you know, adding more safety. Uh, and uh, what, one thing actually you, uh, that uh, Robert and you all are not aware of is that we actually expanded it beyond what PD recommended. Um, we, we met with Montgomery PD um, about a week ago and walked away with a, a recommendation for the, for the slow zone. Um, we went ahead and, and, and expanded that a little bit just to, uh, you know, just to start here and we'll, we'll see how it goes. But the good thing is that we're always nimble and we're always happy to adjust whether we need to increase it or decrease it, both in size and in speed. So, so that's some of the changes we've implemented to you know, continue to take in uh, your, your suggestions and make sure that um, we're addressing some of the issues. Oh, um, how could I forget? We did implement one other thing, which was um, we're now verifying IDs. Uh, and that includes for anyone who already had an account, uh, because one of the things we heard from PD is that there's a bit of joy riding, especially on the weekends from some from youngsters. Um, so we wanted to, you know, curtail that. So what we did is we implemented uh, a certain level of ID verification and there are different directions we can go. We could we could add more to that ID verification if we need to get stricter. Um, we implemented sort of a mid-level um, tier of that. And now anybody who had an account and anyone who opens an account has to verify their ID. Um, and of course, you know, we think that'll, that, that'll help with uh, some of the underage uh, riding that we're seeing late at night on the weekends. Um, so with that said, uh, you know, open to any questions. Uh, I do know that Robert uh, uh, wanted me to talk a little bit about our fleet manager. That's the person who actually uh, corrals all, all the scooters, charges them, and rebalances them throughout the day. Um, so let me know if there's anything in specific you want to hear about that. But let me, you know, I've spoke plenty. Let me turn it over to you guys and see if there's any questions I can answer. Hey, Marco. Councilor Johnson, how you doing? Um, Bruno. Bruno. Sorry. I, I, I'm well. How are you? I'm good. Um, I just wanted you to expand a little bit for those that we do probably have a population of people that have never rode the scooter, so they are not aware of how the app actually works um, because they don't have the app. So I would ask if you just break this down a little bit further for those that are watching that don't quite understand um, how the app works, what kind of updates you give out, um, how does it work when you sign up, um, just the education piece, and then I want you to expand on the no ride zones and the curfew a little bit further, please. Sure, happy to. Thank you. So, so uh, the way the uh, the app works is you, first you download the app. Um, you know, so you, you go to your whatever phone you use, you download the Bird app. It's going to prompt you to register an account. And it's going to prompt you to uh, input a form of payment, usually in a credit or debit card. Um, I'll get. I'll circle back to the options for folks that don't have smartphones or the bankless, um, because one thing that, you know, we make sure to do uh, at BIRD is provide equitable access. So uh, we do have options for those that don't have smartphones or uh, any, any banking uh, or any sort of banking account. Um, that does end up being a very small portion of folks that, that go that route. So the most common route is, of course, downloading the app, you register um, your account, at this point, you would also have to input an ID. Um, you'd have to take a picture of that ID, uh, and then we verify it on our back end. It's a third party that does it for us, so it's it, you know it's it's a verification that's done and 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 uh, works about a hundred percent, like something like ninety nine point something percent that that it actually is able to verify those IDs. Um, and then you would put in some kind of payment system, and then now you're you're allowed to ride. We will at that point. 
uh, walk you through some prompts on how to ride. So on the app itself, it's going to give you some instructions. Um, it, acknowledging that you're a first time rider in Montgomery, doesn't matter if you've used it in other markets, it's still gonna walk you through this quick tutorial on how to actually ride. Um, so it tells you about it, how to unlock it, how to accelerate, where the brakes are. It, it gives you uh, rules of the road, like no sidewalk riding and those kinds of things are all prompted in front of you. You have to read through those. Eventually, uh, as you keep swiping through, through the screens, you get to the last one, which is a disclaimer, you check off on that and now you are free to ride. You would take the app at that point and look for the nearest scooter. You would use the, the app to um, essentially take a picture of the QR code on the scooter. Um, and at that point it's unlocked and you can go ahead and jump on and, and, and be on your way. Then um, when you get to your destination, uh, if it's in the areas where there's forced parking, um, which is essentially uh, you know, about a three mile radius around the downtown area, then you would uh, have to make sure you park within a corral. Uh, and those are corrals that, as you all might recall, we worked with the city to identify. Um, there's no physical marking, they just show up digital on the app. Um, if the person tries to end the ride within the forced parking uh, zone um, and they're not in a corral, it'll tell them you can't end a ride here, here are your nearest corrals. They would have to then move to, to the nearest one. Once they're in there, um, the app will allow them to end the ride. They'll take a picture of the scooter to show that it's upright and, and parked, not blocking the right of way. Uh, and then the ride ends. They'll get a receipt for it. We thank them, of course. And, and that's essentially the whole process of how to start and, and stop a ride. Um, any questions there? No, thank you, Bruno. Um, can you just go ahead and uh, speak on uh, how the, the economic impact of the rides and how it has exceeded your expectations as a company with how you came in originally for um, the Montgomery push-out or rollout? Rather. Yes, absolutely. Abs absolutely. Um, I would encourage anyone who's interested in this side of it to, to look up a uh, study done by uh, Emory University out of Atlanta. Um, so it's an independent study done by the, the School of Economy there. Um, they specifically studied scooters and the, the economic impact they have on, on the communities that they're in, the shared scooter programs. Um, and it's stated that uh, each scooter adds about $2,000 uh, to local businesses um, per year um, to, to, again, local businesses. Um, and the idea is that because when you're on a scooter, unlike when you're in a car, you can do a lot more window shopping. You're much more likely to stop uh, somewhere where, you know, if you're in your car, you're not gonna pull over, find a parking spot and get out. Um, so, so the economic impact to, to the downtown area, we hope is going to have a similar effect. And that's generally what we see in, in, in our market. So, um, you know, that's obviously the benefit to the city and the benefit to, to the store owners and all the commerce that, that happens there. Um, and as far as uh, for, for us um, on ridership, um, it is pretty common to, to start slow. We don't do a lot of advertising and that's, that's by design. Um, what, we, we prefer to grow uh, by word of mouth. We think that's a more organic growth that is also a little slower pace as opposed to you know us constantly advertising. And that would lead to a lot of ridership right at the beginning. And we prefer to start the program slow. But Montgomery took to it really quick. Um, we're at the point where we're seeing on the weekends anywhere between four and five rides per scooter per day. Um, we were expecting that number to be somewhere above two. So to see double that is really encouraging and tells us there's, there's clearly a need and a demand uh, in, in the city. So, um, so yeah, yeah, that's very exciting for us. And we're, you know, we're excited to, to continue to grow with Montgomery as, as you all see needed. Um, uh, Marco, it was one question uh, from one of our counselors on uh, how much uh, money has been made on the scooters. Can you give a estimated amount? I know you're riding right now. Uh, can you give yeah, so, an estimated so, amount? So I don't have that number in front of me right now, but also uh, we don't tend to share that publicly, as you can imagine, that, that's a, a question that our competitors would love to know. <laughs> but I'm happy to have that conversation with any of you all if, if you, uh, yeah, I think he, if, he, you know. If, he, he wants to send that to you, not public or say it publicly, but he's willing to share right, it. Right, happy, happy to have the conversation, but you know, for, for competitive advantages, we, we, we try to not share the, 
as all the companies do, we try to not share the, the earnings publicly. But Absolutely. If that's uh, understanding, yeah. Yeah, I appreciate the understanding. But I, I, I think I, I think he can probably say that they're doing very well based on three months so yeah. far. Is that right, Bruno? Robert, I just say yes. Yeah, so de de definitely exceeded expectations. We, uh, absolutely. Yeah, I got one. All right. Any more questions, Mr. Mitchell? Mr. Protein, I have one question. Um, you, you set your curfew. What time are they actually shutting off? Um, at what time? And was your ridership um, bigger after eight o'clock versus during the daytime? So would that affect you for your economic bottom line for um, doing a curfew? And what time would that curfew? Um, stop those those um, scooters. Uh, absolutely, appreciate the the question. Um, of, of course, it's going to have an effect on bottom line. Anytime you're cutting off hours of operation, even if it's hours where they're less used, it, it, it's going to have some effect. Um, specifically to the to the question of of, of the timing, um, we the bulk of the rides still happen before uh, 10 p.m. So you know from from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m., we have more rides than we have from 10 to, to 6 a.m. Um, it's not even close. It's, it's something like 70, 30, or, or 80, 20. Um, but, you know, that's still a significant portion. So, so it, it, will, it will take a hit on the bottom line. Um, we, we implemented it, uh, not at the request of the city. As, actually, I believe one council person also requested it. Um, they, they requested actually a little later than what we ended up doing. We implemented a 10 o'clock curfew at the moment. Um, that was at the request of PD, um, and you know we're hoping to circle. But it, apparently, there was a, a big event in town, and and they wanted to help with a they wanted a little help with the crowd control. So we got a call the, over the weekend and said, "Is there something we can do?" And we said, "Yes, let us shut them off at this time so that you don't have to worry about that on top of the crowd control you're already doing." Um, we're hoping to circle back with you all and PD to to uh, agree on a on a on a time. Um, my suggestion. And this is what we usually do in, in cities that, that have concerns about um, crowd control in, in their densest areas. It, the more common time is a midnight curfew. So that is something that, you know, we, we could do. It's currently 10, but we did that for the event. We're hoping to be able to shift it back to, to, to midnight. Um, the reality of it is that rise from midnight after is something about 2% of rides. That's such a minimal number um, that that would not have a significant impact, but we think that those rides happening at that time is what PD would like to control. So that, you know, that's the time that I think is a good compromise and, and will work on both ends. Um, did I answer all, all the questions there? Is there anything I have else? a question. Bruno, what's the average, can you give me the average ages of riders? Do you have the age so, of so the riders? I don't, I, I don't have the average age. I'm not even sure. We don't normally look at that. The one thing we do is now we're verifying the age that they have to be over 18. So, um, you know, now that we have the ID verification, they will have to be over 18, but I don't have the numbers of the average. I wonder, I've never been asked that, so I don't, I don't even know if we can pull it, but I'm happy to ask my team and, and see if we can get that number for you. So, so now but we're making rest sure they have to be over 18. Team, right? Correct. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Correct. Say, say that one more time. So now they have to be over 18, correct? Oh, yes. And, and that's actually verified through a driver's license scan or an ID scan. So they have to. Two forms of ID. Yeah, on a, on a per person uh, basis. Now, that doesn't mean that somebody can't work around that because if, if they want to, if you want to figure out how to do it, I mean, it can be done. But yeah, it is age verified through a driver's license uh, scan. Okay. Um, to, to what Robert uh, was referring to. Um, you know, it, it's not, un well, I wouldn't say it's common, it does happen sometimes that a parent will open up an account for, for their kid, and that's sort of the workaround, right? They, they, they use their, their, their account. So what we're doing on our end is we're resetting it every couple of weeks so that you'll, at the beginning, so that folks will have to re-enter uh, their IDs. And what we find is that parents may be willing to do that once, but they're not going to be doing that every week. So that tends to uh, curtail the, the, uh, that workaround. Okay. So, so one, so one last thing, just to make sure y'all are, y'all know where we are on where the no ride zones are right now, which is just a geo fence that they've actually put around particular buildings where you can't enter into that building or own anywhere within the fence that's been put around it. Uh, so far, that's the Renaissance Hotel, um, uh, Embassy Suites, the Alley, Biscuit Stadium, uh, the the parking deck across the street from Biscuit Stadium. 
because sometimes people will do some creative things in parking decks and go in and go as fast as they can and, and give it all that they have. And, and they've also, one thing that Bruno didn't say was the speeds have been decreased from, I think, is it 15 miles per hour, Bruno, down to 11 miles per hour at this point? Um, and correct, not citywide, but in the denser area. That's just correct. In, in the dense, in the dense area, okay. and uh, also the state capitol grounds. Those are the the geo fence locations that are in place right now, and they have the ability to add more if if it's needed. And you know, at at the end of the day, we're kind of in because we're so early in the um, implementation process. We're in kind of a calibration phase of what's the optimum way for the scooters to operate not just in downtown, but, you know, citywide as right. a whole. All right. Thank you, yeah, thank you Robert. Um, council, I just want to add, um, since we're already on this, so I, we won't have to just push it out. Um, what I did was after we got with Bird and we had our meeting, um, and after the incident, I got my intern that's a student in policy at Troy University to do some research for me. And um, I gave it to all of you all. I gave it to the city attorney. Brenda has a copy, and what I want to do after today, um, we've already heard, and I kind of heard from you all already individually, um, from this point forward, and this is for the public, because the council is already aware, um, I've been looking into uh, juvenile curfew in the entertainment districts, um, and the entertainment districts include downtown, the Cloverdale area, and Cottage Hill area, uh, which is, we consider five points. Um, and what'll happen is we'll try to, we're working towards after the research, we pulled information from Mobile, Alabama, which is our sister city as far as population and when they implemented scooters, what they did, what they thought would have been some mitigating efforts. She kind of gave some phone calls down to that area and we really surveyed what that looked like for Mobile and what, we can, what it can look like for Montgomery. And um, we got some really good input um, and I did a survey across social media because a lot of times our job is to create policy to help Robert and his staff mitigate these factors. And so I did a survey across social media because one group of people can't make this decision. It has to be something that is collective and with input from the people that put us in these seats. Um, and so what I did when I collected that info, actually one of the citizens mentioned Mobile. Um, and how they implemented the curfew. Um, and uh, Robert, I shared that information with yes, you. Um, I had people talk about curfew and the city was all for entertainment district curfews. So with the information that I've gathered um, in my intern council um, next meeting, I would like to present uh, ordinance with all everything that's in effect through BIRD, we'll put that on paper for those that don't know, that need to know just for education purposes because everybody doesn't have the app, and then we'll put implement these factors and findings that we have here on paper into that ordinance, and I would like to put it in front of you all for a vote next council meeting. All right. Mr. President, uh, Mr. Protein. Mr. Mitch. Um, council Grant, I mean, Council Johnson, I, I, I love the idea. Only thing that I ask that we have a, a problem throughout the whole city. Mm -hmm. And I just don't want us to say that we're just protecting downtown and we're not worried about the other sides of Montgomery. We just had an incident at um, the movie theater. Uh, we just had an incident at Rock and Jump. So if it's nothing for, but the, for the summer, because these kids are out and don't have anything to do, I would love if the council would look at, because when I first came in, we talked about a juvenile curfew throughout the whole city. And I, I definitely want us to look at it due to the fact that kids just got out for the summer. I would love to incorporate this throughout the entire city, for, at least until school start back. So if we can please consider or we can incorporate that throughout the whole city, I greatly would appreciate it. Yes, sir, I definitely so, do that. And so, uh, ahead, Mr. Protein, let me have a, a few words. I also would like to have um, MPD give us some numbers to, to statistically what our I know, you know, every time we see something, we say youth, but some of these are adults. That is true. But, but either way, I like to see some numbers. Yeah. Y'all hear me over there? I know uh, Chief Hall is in here, and, uh, but Chief Rucker, I know, uh, well, Major Rucker. Okay. Um, are we going to talk about this in the council meeting? We can. Yeah, we, we can. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Can, can we just get some numbers? I want to get some statistics because I like to, you know, when we implement stuff, we need to do it based off data. Like, like you said, you 
you did a survey, but like I haven't seen that survey, and I would like for us to have a public hearing about it, kind of like we did the um, um, police, police uh -huh, civilian review board. Just have at least one public hearing where we invite the public to come out and, and speak vocally to us about it. Maybe we can do that at the next meeting, put that out that we want to have a public hearing about a citywide curfew just to have any input. Some people may may not care either way, and that's fine. And I don't know if we need to already have the resolution ready. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So, so we'll present it next week, and then maybe the week after we can, you know. But I would like to just get some information. Can we get some, some numbers statistically on how many of these crimes are being committed by youth? Does that make sense? So that when we're talking about limiting their access to the city, let's make sure it's that's who we need to be targeting. I know there are some things that's happening um, that we may need to you know, get a grip on, and this could be perfect for that, but I would like to know, statistically, is it the youth that's committing the high number of crimes in the city? I'll, I'll pass it on. Okay. I, know, I, I think I know what you're looking for. Okay. And can you have that? Um, Brenda, I know Lynn is not here. Uh, just so we won't take up time in the council meeting, we can do it in the public. We can have a public safety committee meeting and do that hearing so that people can come in outside of council hours, and okay. then we can do the vote in the council meeting. Okay, and I think we have to do that at council, right? Yeah, we'll have to Call put it in the committee the from the council. Yeah, mm -hmm. council. can't do it from work session. We'll do it once it's presented. We'll, okay. we'll, we'll, we'll set it well, you'll, right. have to put, you'll have to assign it to committee. Assign it to a committee. Yeah. Yes. Right. Okay. okay. All right, Robert, thank anything, you. any more questions? All right, thank you, Mr. Smith. Yes, sir. Thank, thank you, Bruno. You. All right, thanks, Bruno. Thank you, you can log off now. All right. Thanks, Bruno. Thank you. In the new business. Thanks, everybody. Sorry I couldn't be with you. All right, new business item three, uh, resolution of show calls hearing on July 5th for the Abraham LLC budget tail in uh, Carmichael Center. We'll talk about that tonight in the uh, council meeting. Yes. Um, <laughs> number four, resolution uh, for intimate domain procedures for public use and public purpose constructing, widening and improving the public street on the uh, White Slope Woodley Road Bridge. Anyone want to talk to us about that? Chris? Come yeah, on. We've been working on this. Is that, that little bridge down there by the center home? I'm at the cemetery. Yeah, it's it, it uh, so far. It's, man. What bridge? Is Hello, council members. Mm -hmm. uh, this is really just to, uh, for the court to uh, clear title for who the actual owner is. Uh, that's the purpose of this hearing is so that we can uh, make sure that we are dealing with the proper, have the court make the decision who the actual owner of the property is. Uh, I don't think it's a dispute over, over the amount, but it's just making sure that we are dealing with the correct property owner. So at the end of the day, we have clear title for the property we're trying to purchase. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any right. questions? All right. Item five, resolution to send into vacation of property on Clay Street, extension west of May Street. Somebody going to talk to us about that? Chris. All right, we'll, we'll address that in the yeah, council meeting. because I don't know what it is. Is this the part of May Street that's over by where the houses are? Is it over by? You know, Clay and May. Well, I'll get somebody to talk to. Okay, hey, Chip. Oh, he's coming back up. That's Patrick. Get your steps in. Yeah, get the so steps in. Uh, this is to vacate a small portion of a uh, of street that actually the street was never built. It's just right away that is there today that exists behind um, the International Truck Dealership on Maxwell okay. Boulevard. Mm -hmm. So this will just kind of clear up that and, and take that out of, out of uh, city ownership and give it to the uh, property owners. Is that, is, and is that um, uh, uh, South, uh, Southland Trucking? Yes. So, we, so it's going to be pretty much giving it over to them? Yeah, it's kind of, it'll kind of split down the middle. Half will go to Southland Trucking and half will go to the, the property owner on the south side of there. Okay, sound good. I like right. it. Okay. All right, number six, application for a retail beer and table wine license at um, one stop at 4320 Narrow Lane Road. Uh, I got some conversation about that. We'll have at the council meeting during that time. Item seven is an appointment. Uh, We're not ready yet. Is an appointment, um, Ms. Johnson, so we'll go with that. And eight, nine resolutions on nuisance and abatement. And the rest of it. number 10 is declaring public nuisance. Right? So that's, that's the agenda for today. And in our public communications time for. 
work session. Uh, we'll start with uh, uh, Levitate, Susan. You guys wanted to brief us on something? Thank you, counselors. Let me get my notes. I don't want to anything wrong. Okay. So we just wanted to give you a heads up on and really put out a roadmap for where we're headed in the next couple meetings, the meetings for June, the last meeting in June, and then the two meetings in July. Um, and so we wanted to bring bring some of the larger items before you and have that those votes on those. And so you have some resolutions in front of you now. One is the trails and alternative transportation. Uh, there's been a $5 million allocation between the city and the county for the trails projects. And so you'll have an opportunity to, to look at that resolution and vote next time on moving those funds to the planning department. Like all the other funds that we've moved, once those funds are in the planning department, then anything that gets spent out of those funds gets to come back before you in a separate resolution. And that says that in the resolution that you're looking at. So you'll, we are not, we're not spending it, we're just moving it to the planning department so that we can bring something before you to, um, according to the plan. Um, the next one is the countywide surveillance and traffic camera network. The county and the city have allocated money for those. The sheriff's department is working on the unincorporated areas in the county that will need cameras. And then the city traffic department is working on the cameras, the plan for the cameras in the city. And they'll present a plan to you for those, for the, these funds. So we would like to move those funds also to the um, traffic department, the engineering department, I'm sorry, the traffic department, so that those funds can be utilized for those projects. And um, I think, you know, we've got maps of where they, there's still a little bit of work to do. They're talking with the Department of Transportation. So again, you'll get another chance to look at those. Um, and then finally, the Kershaw YMCA Improvement and Land Acquisition. That is an amendment to the YMCA agreement that would include Kershaw to improve the Kershaw facility and acquire some land there. Um, Commissioner Moore Ziegler was not involved in the original um, subcommittee meetings because she had not been, uh, she wasn't in the position at the time, and so this is a re request that she has made for her area uh, out in, uh, at Kershaw. And that is $500,000 from the city and $500,000 from the county, and that was passed in y'all's what we call the omnibus. Um, resolution. So when that agreement comes back, um, you know we'll, we'll be able to move forward on that resolution to enter to amend that agreement for the YMCA. Susan, I, I got a question. Go ahead, Mr. Uh, on the trails. Originally, that money was going to be a grant. I mean, that was going to be a matching portion of a grant. So we could take that five million dollars and it turn it into twenty or twenty-five million. That's that's correct. That's my understanding. Is they that can, still the case? We're not going to spend that money. It's just going to be matching. Our, our portion on a larger number, right? Right. So some of these grants can you can't um, dollar for dollar match, but what you can do is match by doing the engineering services. So it'll either be a match in terms of a dollar for dollar, which is the the state grants, or it can be we'll do the engineering and planning on the trail, and then a federal grant will complete the trail. So yes, this money is meant to leverage other money, and it could be up to seventy million dollars of other money. Well, and I thought that we said that we couldn't use federal money to match. So you're saying because you, you're going to get around that by saying it's just going to cover the expense of engineering. So it's really not dollars that we're putting just way around the loophole. Well, the, yeah, right. Yeah. So so that the ARPA funds restrict and some, and some grants restrict dollar for dollar matches. And so we want to we want to make you aware of the fact that some of them could be for the ADECA grants. but some of the other is that you have to put the services in as a, it's not really a match, but it's a, we're going to do this part and you do that part. Well, but those projects will come to you one by one. Did, did we ever contact the railroad about buying this triple land from down here to Oak Park, the, four, five, the two or three miles, three or four miles, whatever it was? The Jackson Trail. So we talked about that. That was when we moved the money over to the uh, planning department. Then I think they can they can start making those contacts. 
And Susan, uh, can I ask you to go back a little bit? Uh, I may have missed it, and I apologize. That's okay. What did Carmen Moore, uh, Commissioner Moore Ziegler, need? This was the Kershaw YMCA. Um, there's a, and I can get y'all the, the backup documentation the Y has sent us, but it's for programs, for uh, improvements to the facility, and for potential land acquisition. Okay. And we've already voted on this. Yes, that yep. was in your omnibus package. <laughs> when you voted on a lot of things, but it was in there too. And it's half a million from the city and half a million from the county. Okay. And then I, um, the following uh, meetings, potentially in July, we wanted to try to also bring a group of resolutions that are sort of similar. Um, these were also included in your omnibus. Uh, the Jackson and Baptist Hospital Assistance. We're gonna have Jackson and Baptist come and speak with y'all and, pre and present what they're gonna do with the money. Um, the Domestic Violence Assistance Program that was requested, that's Child Protect. Um, oh shoot, Child Protect. Uh, oh, I'm forgetting the two one other place? ones. One Place? Yes, One Place and then the, the yeah, and Family Sunshine Center. Sorry, I've got a bunch of stuff in my head today. Um, and then there's an emergency vehicle procurement that the city and the county have passed for uh, acquiring emergency vehicles for the unincorporated areas. There's some delay times on 911 calls, and so we're working toward that with uh, Commissioner Singleton and uh, Commissioner Sankey on that. Was so that in the omnibus? That was in the omnibus, yes. For emergency vehicles? Emergency vehicles, yeah. It's one point, yeah, one million, that's right. Yeah. So it would be half a million from you guys and half a million from the county. Um, and then the last one in July will be the River Region United Way. Um, Mr. Pruitt, I'm glad you walked in on that one, but they're, they're going to have their information together for us, and that's sort of the Flatwood community swap out um, for that. And then um, I'm happy to take any questions about any of these, but we'd also like to give you a few updates on where we are on the sanitary sewer. Go ahead. So a lot of stuff has been happening on that. Um, you know, we encouraged the waterworks to sign their MOU. The city and the county had signed the MOU that said they would be willing to work with the waterworks board to get the sanitary sewer done. That MOU is supposed to be on the June 20th agenda for the waterworks board, and so we have made ADEM aware of that. The reason for the MOU that y'all have seen and been on the emails for, the reason for that is that ADEM wanted evidence that the city and the county were working together with the Waterworks Board in order to put uh, the county of Montgomery, the city of Montgomery in the line for getting the ARPA funds that the state has, the state ARPA dollars. They put about $400 million <coughs> in ADEM of additional funds from the latest ARPA. Uh, legislation and so they wanted evidence that everybody was going to work together. Um, that is in order to get um, per household funding from ADEM for Madison Park. So that's the application that they're considering. So depending on the number of households that are going to be covered in the Madison Park area, that's how the funding will be calculated. So for instance, if they want to cover 100 homes in Madison Park, then ADEM will grant $3 million dollars um, $30,000 per home. And that will be put together with the money that you've already allocated uh, for sanitary sewer for the Madison Park portion. You've allocated money for, you know, more than Madison Park, but that will be put together with the Madison Park money that's been allocated. And the engineers will kind of tell us how far they can go with that. Um, and so tomorrow, they, ADEM needs the number of households that will be covered in Madison Park by close of business tomorrow. So we found that out today. So we're gonna have a meeting tomorrow with um, you know, the engineers uh, and the map people that represent Madison Park and some leadership to look at those maps and, and have, the, have, have the engineer help determine how many households that is so we can give that number to ADEM so then they can put us in line for the funding at ADEM for the Madison Park project. Um, and before we move on past that, Susan, I, um, we are, um, you giving an update about it, and more of your update is about the Madison Park area, but just for the record, for anybody in District 4 that's here or maybe watching, 
Um, the $5 million is about $5 million that was allocated for District 4. That's still there. That is still on the table to be used. That has nothing to do with this necessarily. That's right. The ADEM money is totally, the, the, what we're having to get together for ADEM is totally separate from the other projects. Okay. I just wanted them to be clear about that. You know, because they'll call me and say <laughs> they didn't hear West Montgomery mentioned, so I just want to put that That's in right. there. That's th right. This is just some, some state money, and there may be some additional state money, and we'll certainly keep an eye out for yeah, that. ADM money is just additional money that's geared toward Madison Park, so that's, that's why we have to act on that. That's right. All right. Yeah. Any questions, Susan? No, thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. All right. Public communication work session, Mr. Richard Williams. You have two minutes. Yes, sir. I'll make it very quick. Uh, good evening, Council. Uh, I wanted to speak to uh, the incident that took place on May 15th uh, while we were at the Renaissance Exchange. Uh, it seems that the Council is now and several other leaders have had conversations on the scooters and I was able to hear and witness on the changes. I wanted to make sure that we were able to, to notice that when we had to drop to the floor, I got a scratch on my arm, had some dry cleaning, and we had to crash to the floor, and the fans were falling down and all those different things, and the staff members were crying. There was not one post where anyone acknowledged the trauma that individuals experienced. And as someone that's been serving in this city, as you serve as well, we know there's a host of trauma. And so I, I, want, to, I want to commend, uh, Ms. Johnson took my call when I called. Uh, also, Darrell Washington took my call as I express uh, my personal concerns. I wanted to share that I don't believe that scooters are childcare. Uh, I think there are other ways that we can have teen resources. And I also wanted to share to respect and honor the time that even if we place these rules in place in this ordinance, if someone doesn't follow these rules, who's going to ensure uh, that these rules are followed. I think there's one thing to place rules and to put plans in action after something's already happened, but I also think we should have the follow through uh, to make sure, uh, because if not, those who are visiting this city, uh, those of us who love this city and live in this city, I don't believe that we should have to do the same work that our veterans have done to hit the floor as bullets are going across your head. And that's a traumatic experience, and I don't believe that that's a city of dreams. And so I, what I would hope is, is the same research that has gone in to this work on the post end, that we would use that same data and research as we roll out any new thing. Because I do believe in Montgomery, we're going to continue to roll out new things. And I think if those things are happening in our sister cities already on the beginning, we can put these things in place in the beginning so we can have less traumatic experience for our neighbors. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Grimes, Liquor Liability Insurance for Event Centers. Yeah, I, I know most bars, this is kind of a legal question, most bars and most hotels that have liquor have to have liquor liability insurance. And, and, there's a, and it made it more affordable. State just passed something at the state making that more affordable because it was getting where only a couple vendors would handle it in the state of Alabama. Well, we've got people that, that have event centers and they say they're gonna be for baby showers, but it always turns out they have liquor. Do we, and so we need to require them to have liquor liability insurance because they rent it out to Brantley over here and Brantley brings the keg in and he doesn't know it. And now they get out and get drunk. So there needs, we need to require them. Can we require these event centers to have liquor liability insurance? I would think that would be within the police powers of the city to do so. Sir? I, I think that would be within the city's police powers to do so. Okay. And I mean, in the general police, not in terms of MPD, but in the general police powers, I think that would work, yes. So we, we could require them to get liquor liability insurance? As a condition. For those okay. <laughs> so bring the ordinance, Mr. Grant. I will. Thank I you, will. sir. Thank you. Uh, number three, uh, Mr. Bill Gilliard, Community Policy and Think Big. Thank you. Yolanda Adams with the Family Guidance Center. The new executive director. Yes. Um, good evening, good evening. Good evening. How are you? I'm Yolanda Adams. I'm the new executive director at Family Guidance Center. And um, I just um, wanted to say thank you for this opportunity to have an opportunity to speak to you all. 
And um, I know that um, Ms. Davis um, dropped off some folders for you all regarding our sneaker gala and some other events that we're having. Um, one of the things we're trying to do is to raise money for some of our programs. Um, sometimes people see that Family Guidance Center has funding and they don't realize that the funding is designated for certain programs. Um, one of the things that we're looking at is, for instance, our counseling department. I've heard this gentleman that just spoke before me talking about some of the traumatic experiences that people were facing. Um, the counseling department, for instance, there's never grants available for counseling. And so this is one of those areas that we have to go out and try to find funding for. Um, we want to be able to provide some uh, additional funding in the schools. And one of the things that we offer is free services for families that come through our doors that are just in need. Um, we can't provide that without some type of funding. And so we're having these, the sneaker gala and different events to raise additional funds for things like that. Um, you know, we do get different grants, but food, a lot of times, some of the families that come to us don't have access to a lot of food, so some, we want to be able to provide different food and, and things like that. So we just want to see if we can get some of the support. We pretty much service somebody from everybody's district at the Family Guidance Center. We do various different programs from childcare to senior programs, and um, I know that we've um, impacted somebody's life that y'all um, work with on a regular basis. We also are going to be having a strategic planning meeting. And one of the things um, I'm looking at is trying to figure out what does our next five years look like? And um, we definitely can say, you know what, we can call the shots and identify what we feel like uh, the community needs. But what we want to do is we want to invite not only the, the folks in the community, but we want to have um, our state officials and things like that all at the table. Um, one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to kind of, we're gonna, it's called the river of life. And so we'll have community members, stakeholders, um, employees all at the table, and then we'll talk about the needs of the community, and that's how we'll identify what we need to do. And so I want to be able to invite you all to that as well. So I have a couple of different things on my agenda. I know I got a little bit of time here. So um, I'm going to give you all um, an invite for that. That is, we're going to have two dates in June, at the end of June, to come to. And then for the sneaker gala, um, that is going to be on August 19th. And we're just looking for some additional funding just to kind of help us out um, with some of the programs that we don't have funds for. Um, I know that we had an event a couple of weeks ago. We invited everybody to come out just to kind of, if you haven't had an opportunity to come out to Family Guidance Center, um, it's a great facility. We do a lot of different things. We also provided you a statewide map so that you also could see all the different programs and services that we're offering, not only in the Montgomery County, but throughout the state um, of Alabama. Um, that's pretty much it, because I know I don't have a lot of time. Do anybody have any questions, Thank you. comments, concerns? We definitely would be interested in having y'all come to the strategic planning, because yeah. it's going to be important for us to identify what are the needs in the community. Okay. Yeah, what we'll do, we'll reach out to you and just kind of set up some individual meetings with you to come by and see you and try to work with you on some of those projects. Yes, thank you. Thank you. All right, Council, I'm going to move number five, which is the chamber to bring us an update on this uh, legislation on tourism and business, BID, uh, in the mayor's message. We'll talk about that, Chip, when you guys come up to talk. Um, next, we will have Ms. Corleen Sampson with Youth Boss Lee. Good evening. We know you all are pressed for time, so we're going to try to be as brief as possible. Uh, my name is Darius Moore. I'm the co-founder of Boss Youth League, along with my wife, uh, Colleen St. Sue, and Moore, the CEO and founder of Boss Youth, co-founder of Boss Youth League as well. We want to thank uh, the mayor, the council president, the council pro team, all the council members, the city of uh, Montgomery, and the recreational department and staff, and also um, the kids in the program that are in attendance today, along with their parents. Um, we want to thank you for allowing us the time and opportunity once again to give you an update on the progress of Boss Youth League, our nonprofit 501c3, where we teach kids entrepreneurship and basketball uh, between the ages of 8 and 18. We've assisted over 3,500 youth since our inception in 2010. 
uh, with graduating, uh, with going on to start their own business, and also uh, with coming, becoming more productive in uh, society, especially the city of Montgomery. We recently went on a, um, uh, a trip with the kids the last time we talked to you, and we want to tell you we appreciate it. They had an opportunity to go visit uh, the NBA uh, facilities. They even got a chance to um, stand in the tunnel, uh, greet Zion Williamson and a lot of, uh, of the other NBA players in New Orleans. Uh, it was a wonderful experience for them. They got up close and personal to the NBA players and also on the basketball court, which they may not, uh, which many of us have never been. I, this was one of my first experiences as well, so I enjoyed it just like them. <laughs> but um, these kids, they, um, um, they also got to meet a um, former NBA player named Carlos Willer. He had a basketball team in New Orleans, and he talked to him. He's also a business owner as well. So they got a chance to ask questions and um, just pick his brain and pick his mind so that they can bring some of those same ideas to Montgomery and hopefully when they graduate or uh, even now begin to thinking about the process of what it would take and uh, the work that it would take to do those things. We just want to give you an update on some other things that we're planning to do and I, I just want to tell you all thank you each and every one. Thank, thank you. you. We would, I would like to also uh, thank y'all personally. I, I'm always happy to see y'all. And uh, we really appreciate what all you've done for the youth in our community. But we have an eventful summer. We um, taking a trip to Atlanta this Saturday. Um, we, got a, we got bag football, a lot of events coming up that we're gonna do with our kids. This is not even all our kids. Some of them are at Sheridan Heights right now. We have over 50 right now that's registered do our summer program, but our, our 15 passengers are going to pick up the ones we have here. But we have uh, another trip to Orlando and Miami where they're going to meet an, uh, um, other professional athletes and possibly uh, um, view uh, the Miami Dolphins training with Tyreek Hill and everything like that. So we, uh, we're trying to raise funds and you know let everybody know about what's going on. And if you don't happen to have any funds, we're asking 1500 from each council member. And even then, we would also like a bonus for you to come to our events that we're having. And we can email that to you as well. And I'm telling you, you come out, you're gonna be a huge fan. The kids are gonna be motivated and they're gonna be very happy to see your face in the place. Thank you. Can Thank you email, don't forget to email us that schedule. Yes, ma'am. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you, appreciate what you do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. All right, Pam, also, we'll, we'll, we'll address, I know you're on for the uh, work session, but if you would, in the mayor's message, if you would come up after the mayor's message with you in the chamber, we'll allow you guys to speak at that time. Okay? All right, that concludes our work session for what, today. What?